There are four things that are essential for a guest. Number one, to sit where asked to sit. Number two, to be satisfied with whatever has been placed before him and it should not be so that he makes utterances such as I eat better than this at my own house or other statements such as people make while sitting together in feasts nowadays. Number three, not to get up without the permission of the host. And number four, to make dua for the host when he does get up. The host should occasionally say to the guest, please have some more, but he should not insist on this, so that by insisting the guest does not eat more than he is able to, thus causing it to become harmful to him. The host should not remain completely silent and he should not serve the meal and then himself disappear. Rather, he should remain there with the guests. He should also not become upset with his servants, etc. in the presence of his guests. If he is a person who has sufficient provisions, he should not, due to the guests, reduce the amount of food of the household. The host should personally be cautious towards his guest and he should not leave this duty of the servants. As showing courtesy to the guest, it is sunnah of Hazrat Ibrahim wasalam. If there are only a few guests, then the host should sit down to eat with them as hospitality demands this. If there are many guests, then one should not sit down with them, but one should be occupied in serving and feeding them. A person who causes discomfort to the guests should not be made to sit with them. When all complete eating, arrange for their hands to be washed. Do not throw away the water after washing the hand of each person before washing the hand of the next. This refers to the customary washing with the jug and bowl. If someone sent you a gift and such a person has both halal and haram possessions, but most of his possessions are halal, then there is no harm in accepting his gift. The same rule applies to partaking in a feast at his home. One should only partake in the meal if you are certain. If most of his possessions, means the wealth, are haram, neither should you accept his gift nor you should uh, partake in a feast at his home until such time that you are not certain that the things which are presented to you are halal. If a person is your debtor and he has invited you to a meal, then in such a case, if he used to even invite you in this manner before taking the loan, there is no harm in accepting his invitation. But if he used to invite you to his home once every 20 days and now he is doing so in 10 days, and he has even prepared more sumptuous meals than in the past, then do not accept this invitation as this is due to the loan. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we have completed or this chapter too. And uh, inshallah from the next uh, lesson we are going to start or new chapter.